right? You know, pandemic conditions have provided fertile ground for mortgage tech innovation. Today, we'll discuss which technology is now con considered table stakes to keep your business efficient and growing, and what's coming next. I'll be moderating this panel, and the expert speakers joining me will be Lisa Kimball, Senior Vice President of Product and Strategic Programs at Finicity, Jamie Crump, Director of High Growth Accounts from Qualia, and Nico Pavlo, Product Marketing Manager from Blend. A huge thank you to Lisa and her colleagues at Finicity for sponsoring this panel. I'm really excited about this and just can't wait to get started. So I see Nico, do we have uh, our other two panelists coming? We're waiting for them to join and we'll jump right in. There we go. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Hi, how are you? Great, great to see you. Great to see Nico. I think we're just waiting for Lisa and then we can get started. Perfect, great to see you all too. Um, we can we can go ahead and do the first question, and then as she joins, we can we can do that. So so I think broadly, the reason we have the three of you guys on here is really we could say that um, we have three different aspects of the mortgage process represented here. So we have you know generally broadly, Finicity at the beginning, Blend in the middle, and Qualia at the end. Of course, there are overlaps. That's not perfect, but we really wanted to do that to kind of get a high level view of what you guys see of what's changed in mortgage technology this year. And, and, and what now is, is really different. So I would love to do that. Um, why don't we start out with, with you, Jamie? Yeah, great. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, you know, over the past year with the pandemic, uh, we saw a, a pretty big shift in the consumer and real estate professional um, expectation of the closing process. Um, and you know, what we saw was technology really accelerate the ability uh, for title companies, lenders, and consumers to just do more of the closing remotely or contactless. Uh, consumers and lenders can do a lot more of the closing process just digitally and upfront. And you know, if they're not doing a, a remote online notarization type of closing, uh, the expectation now is that uh, the time of the closing table will only be about five minutes as opposed to two hours, or they can benefit from doing you know, a curbside closing. Um, one other area too that I think we saw a lot of technology really accelerate is pretty much just streamlining the, the overall collaboration between title companies and lenders during the closing process. And I think we saw this trend mainly because of the refinance boom and just the need for title companies and lenders to work more efficiently with one another uh, and really align their operations. And we're seeing that they're using technology to do that. We saw some, I mean, I, I think closing is one of the things that was so uh, most easily observable that changed this year, um, just because, I mean, we couldn't meet, meet in person. Lots of things had to change as well as like the showing. So, so thank you for that high level view. And Lisa, welcome to the panel. So glad to have you. Hi, thank you very much. A couple challenges this morning, but I'm glad to be here. Uh, we're glad to have you. And there's always challenges, no matter how many times we try to we try to get around it. So, you know, we, we started out with that sort of high level question of what you're seeing changing. I'd love to get your view on that. Yeah, absolutely. So much change um, this this past year. Um, and it, there's a couple of things that really come to mind for me. I would say, first and foremost, um, consumer adoption of digital solutions has just skyrocketed. And um, I probably don't need to say a lot more about that. Each of us is experiencing it and, and driving it um, and in multiple facets in our lives. Um, that's been really amazing to just watch that um, catch fire and really take hold this year. Um, specifically related to like lending verifications and mortgage verifications. I think that the points you were just talking about related to closing also come to mind. So needing to be socially distanced um, for transactions meaning that consumers um, aren't dropping off documents or meeting their loan officers in person. Um, but then also the need for lenders to send their entire workforce home uh, on, on a uh, drop of a hat is really has really been amazing. And when you um, layer onto that, the incredible volumes and, uh, and the need to be responsive to those, just the challenge for lenders in terms of being able to, to keep processing 
um, has been substantial. And then the, the last thing that I think has, has also been really marked this year is um, the GSE policies um, and how they're thinking about, and essentially all of the secondary market is thinking about uh, how to continue to manage credit risk in such a volatile um, economic time. So we're looking at things like, you know, credit scores not really telling the picture of what maybe has been happening in, um, in borrowers' lives and with respect to their income. Uh, over the last year. So uh, we really believe that real-time API solutions are key uh, to be able to get hands around where is the real credit risk and also ensuring that people who continue to be credit worthy are able to demonstrate that and are able to keep, um, keep their transactions moving. Yeah, that's a great point and something that we didn't even uh, mention in our, you know, this is what happened over the last year, but those changing policies that you guys had to keep up with constantly that lenders had to be very aware of uh, was was a huge challenge. And Nico, I'd love to, to get your high level view on this. Sure, absolutely. Well, first off, uh, Sarah, Housing Wire, thanks for having me and Lisa and Jamie, really look forward to the uh, discussion here. So uh, 2020, look, was an insane year for the mortgage industry. There were so many different storylines that we could dive deeper into, right? The shutdowns, the stimulus packages, the crazy low rate environment, the spread between the 10 year and the mortgage rates, uh, remote work, these, we could have a dedicated session on each one of these different topics, but from a technology perspective, we really saw one of the greatest accelerations of digital technology the industry has ever seen. And uh, what took place in just a few months in the course over the year uh, could easily have taken the industry at least you know, 10 years to, uh, to really uh, progress and transpire. And so the way I see it is that there's really sort of two pillars that drove this record technology adoption. On, on one side, we had this pretty much move overnight to this digital first economy. And so this really acted as a forcing function for borrowers to use the digital tools to engage in the mortgage process. And then on the, on the lender side, it was sort of out of necessity. If you wanted to continue to operate in this environment, you really needed to engage with customers through these uh, digital tools. And so that's the first pillar is sort of this move overnight to this digital first economy. The second pillar is we also saw this record epic refinance boom, one of the greatest refinance booms in, uh, in, in history. And so lenders were flooded, everyone was frantic, uh, hair on fire, the insane hours, the burnout, et cetera, right? It was sort of almost the perfect storm where we had super low rates and then uh, super high margins. And technology really became a necessity to stay afloat in this, uh, in this environment. And interestingly, from a blend perspective, we sort of had a built-in A-B test that had a really stark difference where we had customers that were actually using blend pre-pandemic and had already integrated us. And they were actually able to scale their operations, doubling and tripling their, uh, in some cases, their volume without adding any additional staff. Whereas on the flip side, for our new Greenfield new customers, they were completely flooded. And so for them, it was really a matter of implementing the right uh, tool set, digital tools, to really stabilize their operations and be able to scale it. So um, the end result, I think here is that we really saw mass adoption across borrowers accepting and using digital tools throughout the mortgage life cycle. And then we also saw lenders really prioritizing digital mortgages and starting to build confidence uh, in them sort of in this pressure tested uh, environment. And then we also saw big investment into the customer technology stack and then also a prioritization and evaluation of what are the right tools for me to have in place uh, to enable remote work and make sure that my teams are productive. Wow, thank you for that view, all of you. I, I appreciate that. Um, Nico, you mentioned digital mortgage in there. So, you know, we've been talking about digital mortgage for 20 years, um, some parts of it. So, so let's, I, I wanna get each of you on that. How close are we to an actual true end-to-end -end digital mortgage? Love to, we'll start with you, Nico, and let's go around. Okay, sure. Why do I feel like this is a little bit of a loaded question here? But uh, <laughs> I would say that there's a lot of, there, we're a lot closer than we think we are. I think that technology in many cases is already there. I see this more of an issue of change management and really building confidence and trust in the new ways of operating. And I really think that together, both borrowers and lenders will really dictate the speed as to when we actually arrive and accomplish a truly digital uh, mortgage. But there are some key areas uh, that are very challenging to, to digitize. So there's things like, you know, the actual processing and you know satisfying conditions, the follow-ups, the needs list, et cetera. This has always been a very document heavy uh, process and it is today. And so 
also, in addition to that, we see you know the sources to fa to facilitate those conditions and to and to meet those needs, those follow ups. Really, those materials come from a lot of different areas, and so I see that this is a big area where you know AI and machine learning really can, can come in and play a vital role in helping us solve this with predictive automation. And so um, at Blend, we're investing heavy in this area, and I really see this as the next big wave in the innovation of the mortgage industry and process. And more tactically, what that looks like is document classifications. So are the doc is the document a W-2, a pay stub, tax, a uh, driver's license, and so forth. And then not only being able to classify the documents, but then being able to extract data out of the documents and eliminate the need for human review. And maybe in some cases, it's not just eliminating the, the human review, but maybe it's also reducing the need for human review only when it matters and accelerating these follow-ups and the actual underlining processing by automating the data, uh, automating it based off of the borrower data. And in some cases, even personalizing the processing based off of the type of borrower. And so I would say, look, there's, you know, when we think about, you know, from app to close, on average, there's about a hundred touches that it takes to take an app to close. And every touch essentially equates to a dollar, uh, to a dollar amount. So to the extent that we can reduce the touches, this directly reduces costs and essentially increases your speed to close. And so this is an area where I see a ton of value and I'm pretty bullish on it. I appreciate that. Lisa, you want to jump in next? Yeah, I'd love to. And, and just uh, would agree with a lot of the things that, that Nico highlighted there. Um, you know, I think that the data extraction and removal of human review wherever we can um, is a really key element here. And, I, you know, we're taking a major step forward uh, with release of products that are combining multiple high value data sources, um, including, you know, direct to third party data sources that then can be validated by the borrower or the consumer, which means that um, we can have a very high confidence level and a very strong coverage rate and remove um, the need for manual review, manual um, data entry in many, many spots um, and for most borrowers. So I think those will be really, really critical. Um, uh, also would, would just agree, like I think as we mentioned before, the consumers are ready, um, borrowers are ready. Um, it's you know been a, a pleasant surprise to me over the last couple of years to realize that people um, not only will, but they want to um, transact even as much as a mortgage um, uh, transaction from their phone, from the line at the grocery store, wherever they are. Um, so I feel like the consumers are ready and I absolutely agree that this is a change management question within the industry um, and um, and within, you know, uh, the um, ranks of, of the lenders. So um, getting loan officers confident and comfortable that when they move to a digital solution, it's going to work for them and for their borrower and they're not going to um, they're not going to get introduced to additional hurdles where they've just got to fall back to the old manual process. So um, I, I think the technology is there. I think the tools are there. Um, and I think that we need to, uh, you know, to ensure that it works incredibly smoothly so that uh, so it's super easy to adopt. Great. And Jamie. Yeah. Uh, to add on to exactly what, you know, Nico and Lisa had mentioned um, from a technology standpoint, I think we are pretty close. Um, but what's difficult is, you know, when the home transaction starts off, it, it starts with either the home search or, you know, the home financing side, and then you go all the way through close and, you know, your documents get recorded. And so I, I don't think it's really just one participant's particular process that's hard to digitize. I think the challenge is having all these processes work together in a digital way uh, to really sync that information together and create, you know, a more holistic consumer uh, closing experience. Um, you know, what's, what's also interesting from what we see is I think the real value too is just choice, you know, enabling consumers to have the choice of how they want to close. Um, you know, it's a it's a pretty big transaction to, to buy or finance a home. And, and I think that there's going to be, you know, value in having, you know, RON closings, hybrid closings, curbside closings. And I think that choice is just so valuable. 
I do think so. So our, my next question is about consumers and the experience. And and one thing I think is that you know we can't really go backwards now. If if you got used to that during that time, not not that those same consumers are going to still you know buy a house this year, but but just in general, uh, we saw what's possible this year. And and I would love to know what you guys think from a consumer experience standpoint. What's going to stick, and and what's even the next level, so that you know uh, by the end of this year we're talking even maybe about some different things. I'm happy to open that up. Lisa, you want to start there? Yeah, I, I'd love to. I mean, I, I personally am really passionate about the consumer experience with respect to um, the way that we can leverage the data. And there's some interesting data points um, that, that have been shared recently. 76% uh, of consumers think that companies um, should understand their expectations and needs. Um, and that, uh, you know, it just markedly continues to increase. Um, and people want more control and insight over the ways that their um, that their data is being used and when and where they are leveraging it. So I feel like all of these really continue to push toward this demand from the consumer for a digital experience. Like I should be able to, while I'm house shopping, look on my mobile device, understand where I am from a financing standpoint, um, do some what if scenarios. And then finally, allow the um, the partners that I'm working with to have access to the data that they need from me in order to be able to carry that transaction forward. Um, so I, th I think it will continue to be very interesting the way that consumers will drive the, the adoption and you know essentially put forth the requirement for real time, um, very uh, dynamic set of information that they have access to. Nico, you want to add to that from the blend perspective? Sure, absolutely. So I think uh, 2020 really proved that a digital first model can work, especially under pressure. And what I expect going forward is actually to see sort of the rise of the consumer self-serve and consumer direct channels. And I expect continued investment and prioritization uh, in these channels. But I think where it gets really interesting is how can we leverage technology not to eliminate the human um, experience, but to actually optimize the human experience. And so Fannie Mae conducted this really cool uh, study uh, last year where they went and they asked a ton of borrowers, look, what, what do you guys want in the mortgage experience? What would be your ideal mortgage experience? 72% of the respondents said that they prefer an online digital experience. But from those same respondents, 65% said that they want a person to actually explain the mortgage terms and options. And so you have 72% that say, hey, I want a digital application, a digital experience, but then those same respondents also say, you know what, I also want somebody to actually walk me through and review everything with me. So essentially borrowers want the best of both worlds. And so the, the goal now is how can we create a high tech and high touch experience? So this is where really where I see it going and where I see the, a, a ton of value. And so it's still very early on uh, in this uh, sort of uh, world. And so the organizations that can capitalize on this will really have first market uh, mover advantage. And Jamie, you wanna uh, chime in from a Qualia perspective or from your perspective? Yeah, to, to add on to uh, Nico's comment about, you know, really making the overall human interaction just more efficient and optimize that piece of it is where I think we're gonna see a lot more of technology step in to um, really assist with that process and, and make it more of a, a high touch uh, technology enabled experience for consumers in general. Um, I think that you know consumers and real estate professionals got like a taste of what it could be. And I think that it's gonna remain, you know, pushing that needle forward to, to having more of a, a digital and, and remote process while also maintaining those relationships. Uh, real estate is local, and so the relationship between the consumer, the lender, the title company, and the real estate agent is still super important. And I think we're just going to see more technology uh, really play a role in having those folks be more productive so they can focus on really fostering and building and maintaining those relationships. I do think it's interesting that in a year when technology was so important, so so were human relationships. They're they're just always going to be important. You know, we've worried for years what's going to get you know which jobs are going to go away, and I'm sure there are some. But I, I also think that this year, if, if nothing else, proved how important that human element was, um, or last year and, and going forward. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the integration of all of these different kinds of technology because you guys, the three of you, represent. 
um, just a whole host of, of solutions that, that help lenders and, and help them help their borrowers. Tell me what that looks like. So APIs are huge. Um, this is how everything you know plugs in together. But what does that look like over the last year? Uh, I'm sorry, over the next year? What can we expect there? And Lisa, I'd love to start with you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that the expansion of, of um, API data transfer across the ecosystem will continue to be really important. Um, you know, as Jamie was mentioning, there's there's the element of the real time information, but moving it smoothly and effectively from one step to the next is critical. And, um, you know, APIs really enable that um, that process to happen um, and also allow for um, another element that I think is really important, which is um, lenders to be able to plug into an ecosystem um, through the use of API technology and allow for them to have choice of um, solution providers without, um, you know, without having to do significantly different integration from um, from provider to provider. Um, and then the other one that comes really forefront for me as well is is um, secondary market, right? GSE integration and the ability to to share that um, high value data quickly and easily all the way through to the secondary market and, and um, get that feedback for the lender and the borrower. Awesome. Jamie. Yeah, to chime in on, uh, you know, Lisa, and even a point, Nico, you mentioned earlier is the real estate mortgage transactions really just involve dozens of people um, and different processes. And one area that um, I think that we're going to see is it's just natural for companies to work with API tools that help them work to build this ecosystem out in a more uh, seamless way. Um, and that's where we really see that value. And I think the future of API integrations will be an important piece to companies streamlining the way in which we transact real estate today and really making it an easier and better experience for everyone. Um, and so when thinking about these different workflows, you know, from the home search, the financing, the talent escrow workflows, I think we're going to see companies working together to help uh, with that data flow and, and build more automation. Um, that'll just aid to better real estate experiences in general. Great point. I, I really think that's so true. And Nico, I'd love to get your perspective here. Sure, absolutely. So um, I think Mark Andreessen uh, said it best. And he's a, I don't know if everybody knows who he is, but he's a pretty famous, well-known uh, VC here in uh, Silicon Valley. And he wrote a pretty cool article back in 2011 called Software's Eating the World. And the article has sort of gained this prophetic status and essentially the premise is this, every industry, every market, every vertical is going to be taken over by technology. And essentially every company will end up becoming a technology company. And this can't be more true than it is uh, today. And so financial services has always a little bit lagged the overall market in terms of uh, technology. And I think the mortgage industry is also traditionally lagged maybe a little bit financial services. But what we're seeing in the mortgage industry is sort of this renaissance that has been created from an innovation perspective over the last couple of years. But the, I think the problem in that, that we're seeing is that a lot of the innovation that we've seen in the mortgage industry is sort of fragmented. And so we see these point solutions that aren't really designed to be integrated across. And so we see a point solution for, C, for CRM and, and lead management. We see a point solution for um, digital POS. Uh, point solution for borrower education, managing the pipeline and and, uh, and so forth. And so where I see this going is actually to move to a unified experience that can integrate all these different solutions in under one platform. And this is obviously a big focus area for us at Blend. We have an entire integrations team that's, that's their job all day long is to figure out how to integrate with all these different uh, solutions and bring in best of breed solutions. And so where I see this going and what I would love to see is this that you know what bring me your origination stack tell me what are the best solutions that you want to use maybe you want to use finicity for ver verification maybe you want to use optimal blue for pricing maybe you want to use a uh, qualia for the closing and so what we'll do is integrate all of these solutions together make them work seamlessly through the use of these apis and allow these solutions together to work in one comprehensive experience for both the borrower and also for uh for your lending teams I think that's so key. In fact, um, 
when we have pulled our audience before, because, you know, before, before we do any of our events, we're like, what is it that people want to know about? And tech stack questions are absolutely top of the list sometimes because people are overwhelmed. Lenders are overwhelmed with the choices that they have and how, how do they make sense of it? In fact, we, we launched a mortgage tech stack and a real estate tech stack um, for our HW Plus members. So everyone who is watching this can go look at that on Housing Mart because it really outlines just the players involved now. Just there are thousands. And and we started the um, um, HW Tech 100 um, in 2014. And that year, I, I have to tell you, we wanted to recognize 100 uh, companies that were in, you know, helping the mortgage space and solutions. It was hard. It was hard to find 100 companies. Well, now it's hard to narrow it down to 100 companies. It takes us forever because there are so many choices out there. So I do think a, a company or, or a person who can really make that easy for lenders, the easier you can make it. So so the, it, not just the integrations, but just how they all work together. And like here, I'm, I'm bringing this to you, right? That's the holy grail. Someone who can solve all my problems at the same time. So, so that will be interesting. Well, I'd love to know, what are you guys most excited about? You're, you're on the front lines with your companies. You're, you're seeing a whole bunch of things happen. We've come off of a transformative year. We know that the, you know, we have regulators more ready than they've ever been meant to really accept technology. We have consumers, we have lenders who now see the need more than they've ever seen before. So what is it that you're excited about 2021 or 2022 that you see coming down the pipe? And I'm happy to start with uh, Jamie, why don't you start? Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Sarah. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I'm really excited to uh, see, you know, in, in 2021, a little bit more about what Nico had mentioned, just the overall coordination between, you know, different uh, folks involved in the transaction, you know, real estate agents, title companies, lenders, and the consumer working more in a, in a digital way. Um, you know, we, we saw uh, a lot of folks move towards RON closings, you know, on the real estate agency side, we also saw a lot of folks now doing virtual tours. Um, and so what I'm really excited to see is how this now evolves, the overall coordination um, and the overall workflow and how we can actually build out a, a better real estate experience for all and really use technology as the backbone to uh, make these teams just have more time to, to focus on uh, building those relationships. Um, so I'm super excited over the next year to see you know, the overall adoption of some of these new technology processes um, and seeing you know, what companies actually you know, get ultimately implemented and start leveraging them. I love that. You know, the closing is so important because that's that's the taste you're leaving in your borrower's mouth, right? Like that that's the last thing they had. And, and if that's a bad experience, it can just cloud everything. You know, so much of this, so much of the back end that you guys take care of, um, all three of you, your companies, other companies, the, the borrower has no idea what's going on. But closing, they know. They know when they get there. They know when they're applying. They know in the underwriting. Uh, they know uh, at the end. There, there are all these touch points that if we don't hit it there, you're really going to lose, you know, any referral business or um, any repeat business, right? So I, I do think that's just really interesting. Nico, um, love to hear what you think. Yeah, and, and especially if you get it all right, only to mess up the closing, then that would just be <laughs> So, um, so what am I excited for 2021? Uh, I don't know. I feel like just being able to eat at my favorite uh, burger restaurant, perhaps in a nice cold <laughs> beer, and some friends yes. would be a win, I think for 2021. <laughs> but uh, yeah, from a from a technology perspective, um, I've kind of already mentioned this a little bit, I think. But um, I'm super excited about seeing the rise of the consumer self serve and consumer direct channels. Um, like Jamie said, I, I'm super passionate about that uh, that piece of it. And I think ultimately this is where the industry is going, is go and, and especially going to move to that high tech, high touch experience. Um, but there's really, I think, three key catalysts that are all coming together to really drive this innovation. So the first is that the digital first economy, it's proven to work and it's going to continue to, to, um, to continue. It's going to continue in 2021 and 2022. We're also moving into a purchase market. So that means we're going to see tighter margins, increased competition. And the customer experience is really going to be the differentiator to capture share. And then the third thing is that there's also going to be a need for operational efficiency and really reduce the origination costs. So those three catalysts all coming together are going to be the perfect sort of storm. And I really, really see this as the perfect set of ingredients to drive a phenomenal innovation over the next year. Wow, those are those are great ingredients. We would all welcome those. Those are amazing. <laughs> uh, Lisa, what about you? 
Um, I, th I think uh, maybe forefront in my mind is just back to the consumer experience as well. And Sarah, you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of things that the borrower doesn't know is going on in the back end. Um, and <clears throat> I think more and more we're exposing a little bit um, of those details in a simple and clean way so that the borrower um, has good awareness. Okay, what's the status of the steps here? What is the full set of steps that need to happen? And, um, and I think continuing to put tools into the, into the hands of the borrowers that allow them to have a comfort level and a real-time update of where things are so that, um, you know, that's not the set of questions they're asking of their loan officer, but they're, you know, they're getting that higher value um, consultative information um, from the people on their team that are helping them. So I think continuing to drive forward in that, um, in that consumer control space will be uh, will be really interesting and fun to see it continue to move forward. Um, and then maybe uh, just uh, on the Finicity side, I'm so excited about the convergence of income and employment um, digital verification that's coming this year and um, the real giant step forward in terms of uh, those verification processes that are provided from, um, from what is being released in the market right now. You know, the reason, I, I so appreciate that. The reason we asked you guys on is because these are the pain points, right? It's it's at the beginning where, where people um, are like, why do I have to give my information? I've already given my information. Why can't you just use that throughout the process? You know, and then it's in the underwriting. It's in the, it's in the operational part. It's at the closing. And so, so appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, speed round. I just want to ask you one more thing. Um, when you think about or if I don't have time to do that, I have time to do that. Great. So that's why it's a speed round. Um, I'd love to know, you know, so we know that, you know, the big lenders, even the medium sized lenders or, or um, uh, of different sizes are doing this, but how do we get it to the next level? How do we get it to the fact that I, I closed on a home in Breckenridge and went to a closing that was as, as paper and manual as you've ever seen? Like, how do you get to that next level of adoption, those next level of lenders? I would love to get you guys uh, your, your input on And uh, Jamie, you can start. Yeah, that's a great question, Sarah. Um, I think that, you know, the, the overall adoption is really going to come from the title companies, the lenders and the real estate agents working together towards a same common goal. Um, I think once when there's, you know, a concrete alignment and understanding that, you know, we, we want to work towards a digital experience, um, I think we'll see those organizations start wanting to build out some of these processes and and really uh, make it a, a more simple uh, transaction overall in terms of that data flow. Um, to your point, Sarah, if, if you filled out your information once, you shouldn't have to fill it out again. Um, so I think it's gonna come from, you know, those three key stakeholders working closely together. Love that, Lisa. Yeah, this is a question that we've been thinking about a lot um, and, and re, uh, solving the challenge um, through technology of how to give a really simple to implement and simple to use experience while um, having it be so complex on the back end that it will cover all the scenarios that are um, that are needed. So I think um, continuing with really straightforward um, solutions for lenders um, and then uh, uh, the parts that they can hand off to their borrowers and ensuring that those solutions are embedded it throughout the ecosystem, right into the into the LOS and POS systems, I think will be another huge piece in terms of adoption. But really, bottom line, like we've got to make it easy to uh, to implement and adopt. Love that, and Nico, uh, wrap us up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I really go back to the fact that it's really a big component of how we move forward is change management. Just because we build solutions and we build the technology doesn't mean that your users will come along the journey with you. We need to actually educate the users, the both the borrowers and also the, 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 the lending teams to actually trust in the, in the in the tools and together we can move forward uh, in this. And something that you know Lisa said that I really agree with is you know, everything comes down to design principles and everything when we're building these technologies, we need to design ease of use and adoption into the tools so that we can see uh, that progression. I, I really appreciate you guys coming on, talking to our audience about these things. Really appreciate uh, from, from your perspectives what we should be looking forward to. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you, Sarah. Bye. Bye.